everyone. It's Friday. It's July the 12th, 2019. I hope everyone's having a beautiful day in the Lord. I have a couple of devotionals for you, but first, as always, I like to say the Our Father, so please join me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Okay, this is called An Altered Attitude, and the reading is from Joel 2.13, and it says, Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful. From time to time I have had people pour out their hearts to me because of their sins, because their sins had been discovered and uh, they were in serious trouble. They wept bitterly because they had devastated their marriage or ruin their reputation. But later someone would tell me that they were back in the same situation. They had not learned from their experience and seemed determined to bring even more chaos into their lives. What was the problem here? The problem was lack of repentance. Their tears were tears of self-pity, but not of repentance. True repentance is a turning from sin. A conscious, deliberate decision to leave sin behind. See, this is why people, when you talk to them about, and you witness to them about Christ, he they hesitate to come because deep down in their heart, they know that they are going to have to give something up. Okay? It is, it is so much more than just reciting the salvation prayer and believing that Jesus died on the cross. You know inside of you that when you make that turn, that that's a commitment. And many people are not ready to make that commitment only if Christ is chugging on their hearts will they be um, feel feel led to give up the life that they're living and make a change I know this because it happened to me it's a conscious deliberate decision to leave sin behind and a conscious turning to God with a commitment to follow his will. Not your will anymore. Okay? Not your will anymore. Um, repentance is only one part of our response to Christ. And even the strength to repent comes from God. So even when you come to him, and you have this re repentant, contrite, sorrowful heart, and you come to him with humility. It's, it's he that breaks you. We can't even take credit for that. Uh, but it is an essential part, for without it, we cannot claim Christ to be our Lord. This is why there's so many people out there who are reciting the prayer, which I call lip service because there's no contrition in their heart. And uh, the contrition is what breaks the pride. The pride is the rebellion of Satan and it has to be surrendered to Jesus in order for the repentance to take effect and work. It's just not a mental thought. It's not a mental decision. It's a spiritual pull that happens when the Lord tugs on you. Okay, and when the Lord wants you, he'll put someone in front of you to guide you to him. Um, 
Godly sorrow brings repentance that leads to salvation and leaves no regret. You could read that in 2 Corinthians 7, 10. Um, I have to get this, rid of this pop-up that just came in front of me. There we go. And some hope for today is, are you living in regret or are you living in repentance? To turn away from our sins is not enough. We must also turn to the Lord. Only he can create a new heart within us and give us the strength to live differently. Okay. okay. This next one is called A Clear Conscience and the reading is from Hebrews 9.14 and it says the blood of Christ will cleanse our conscience. Each of us has a conscience that sits as a judge over every thought, every word, and every deed. It can be sensitive, it can be underdeveloped, or distorted, depending upon the way we have used or abused it. The human conscience is defiled by sin says the Bible and that is one reason it is not a reliable guide by itself our conscience needs to be cleansed by the purifying work of the Holy Spirit and honed and sharpened by the truth of the Word of God Satan can even twist our consciences if they are not yielded to Christ and convince us that wrong is really right. But in spite of its frailty, our conscience is still important and God still uses it to warn us of danger. All of us have experienced the backlash of guilt after a transgression. Is God speaking to you about something that is not right in your life? Something you may be doing although, although you know it dishonors Christ? Don't ignore that voice or think that it doesn't matter. Face your sin, confess it, put it right, and never touch it again and some hope for today on this one is thank you God for the gift of a conscience that warns me when I'm straying into dangerous territory may I always be obedient and allow the Holy Spirit to guide me according to your will and one thing I could say honestly um, once you yield to the ministry of the Holy Spirit and allow the Holy Spirit to work its purifying uh, uh, process in you, you will see yourself go from A to B to C to D. You will see, you will be able to look back upon where you came from and where you are now. And all of that uh, means that you, you have to become a child and the Holy Spirit is your parent. Like I said in another video, uh, no, nobody's parent here in this world did the right thing. No one had it right. Uh, they were either overkill or let children get away with too much or gave too much attention or no attention at all nobody has the answer here the Holy Spirit uh, of God is the greatest teacher you can have to to raise you up raise you up in the Lord's righteousness and once you allow that to happen you can look back on your past and see where you came from and where you are now and all the improvements that were made by the Holy Spirit in your life. 
the um, the inheritance of the Holy Spirit is the fruit the joy the peace the love the gentleness the kindness <clears throat> all of it it's the evidence that you have allowed the Holy Spirit to transform your life and into the likeness of Jesus and you know um, if you're tired of this world and um, playing by your own rules and your own rules don't work they haven't worked and every time you've tried something new you've failed terribly uh, well you know get on the winning team come to Jesus if you're feeling that tug on your heart um, you know and you're struggling and uh, you're suffering and no matter what it is you know if you're lonely or you're uh, uh, you know in an abusive relationship or you're suffering with any kind of addiction addiction can take any shape or form um, you have idolatry um, lust whatever it is whatever your problem is whatever you're doing that you hate that you wish you could stop doing the Holy Sp the Holy Spirit can help you throw that off okay I'm going to put the salvation video right behind this <laughs> and like I said if you feel that tug on your heart just follow along on this video and the Lord and the Holy Spirit will do the rest okay I want to remind you that I love you and Jesus loves you <laughs> never forget how much Jesus loves you he loves you so much he, he truly does and if like I said you feel that pull then he's calling you and there's no greater honor than to feel that tug I remember that tug like I remember the day I got married you can't forget that okay God bless you and follow along have a great day